to start off with. That's literally what Trump said to a reporter who asked if he'd be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. The prize will be world peace. Can you imagine a world without war? I don't think we can. We've been led to believe that war is normal, that it's part of being human. Well, it's not. Suppression isn't normal. Poverty isn't normal. There's enough food to feed the entire world. Which was definitely within the reach of Tesla. Then you can change time. If quantum physics is correct, if you can really jump from one timeline to another parallel one, you can time travel, change certain things and go back without people noticing a thing. Unless you leave clues behind, like a magazine that seems totally out of place. Like cue predictions of specific outcomes that could impossibly have been foretold, not even with the use of quantum probability theory. Is that how Q works? With direct knowledge of the future, through various timelines, probability waves? Is that why Trump is still alive and even missile attacks have been countered? Is this how Q manages to predict exact poll numbers and events to the minute and second precise as encoded in the Q drops and the Q clock? What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. And so the Bible has foreshadowing of historic events from the Old Testament to provide a preview of future events. Examples are such as the Passover of Exodus that foreshadowed the crucifixion of Christ on the cross and his shed blood that provides the remission of sins. Or you can look at the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 disciples. There are many similarities like that throughout the Bible, what we call foreshadowing. What will happen in the future has already in some fashion happened in the past. So this is the case for prophecies and things to come. So another example here is King Nebuchadnezzar who was the Babylonian king. And in Daniel chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that he could not remember, and he called on all his wise men to interpret. Well, God blessed Daniel to know the dream and its meaning. So the dream was the Babylonian king had seen a statue with a head of gold, a torso of silver, a midsection of bronze, legs of iron and feet, of iron and clay. Each different metal represented the four kingdoms that would dominate the earth in the coming centuries, starting with the Babylonian kingdom. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 7 it says, Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And whoever Whosoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, he has given into thine hand, and hath made me the ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. Did I say Daniel chapter 2, verse 7 and 38? So Nebuchadnezzar was a global ruler. He had been given power by God and raised up by God to rule the entire known world. Nebuchadnezzar, after hearing this interpretation, the king promoted Daniel to his chief advisor. And then he filled himself up later with pride, and this will be the shadow of the Antichrist to come. So we go on to Daniel chapter 3, Okay, verse 1, and it says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 60 cubits high, 6 cubit wide, 
and set up on the plain of Dura in the providence of Babylon. Verse 2, then he summoned the uh, satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So we have here a little bit of foreshadowing. We have one of the places in the Bible where you can arrive to the number 666. As we all know, 666 is listed as the name of a man who will set in the abomination of desolation. So that's one of the foreshadows of the number of 666. Okay? So here you can see kind of a foreshadow of the religious system of the Antichrist to come. So as in the book of Revelation, it prophesies that the beast or the Antichrist will be a global ruler he will have power over people in his religious system, and it will be based on the worship of him. In Revelation 13.6, it reads, And he opened his mouth and blasphemed blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kinds of tongues, kindreds, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, as in Nebuchadnezzar, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So just like Nebuchadnezzar, the Antichrist will proclaim himself to be God, and he will be worshipped by all the people of the earth who do not have Jesus Christ as their Savior. So there are no exceptions in this system once it is established. So we have the false prophet. Remember I, in my last video, I had that trinity. We have the beast, we have the Antichrist, we have the false prophet. And he, they will emerge on the public scene at the same time as the Antichrist and will be a spiritual leader who promotes the Antichrist as, quote-unquote, the one, <laughs> the Messiah the world has been waiting for. And we saw that in that video, right? And he will also provide false miracles and emerge to the top of the world and set up an image of himself, which will be the Antichrist. And in verse 14, it says, And he will deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had a wound by the sword and did live. Verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and that image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship. The image of the beast should be killed. So you see that parallel between the image of the beast, the image that Nebuchadnezzar built, and we don't know if it'll be a statue or what, but whatever it is, all will need to be worshipped. And if they don't, there will be a penalty of death, just like Nebuchadnezzar throwing everyone into the fiery furnace. So, what happens 
to Nebuchadnezzar later. Well, in between there, you know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which are Daniel's friends, right, all didn't worship the statue when the music started playing, and they got thrown in the fiery furnace. But they survived, as you know. You can go ahead and read that. And um, then Daniel said, there was four, not three, and your great is your God. But let's go on. So, okay, so in uh, Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And I will just go directly to how Daniel interpreted the dream in verse 19. And I encourage you to read, you know, these chapters, at least one through three, in context with what I'm saying here. Um, Daniel was greatly perplexed for a time, and his thoughts were terrified. So the king said, Belieshar, which was Daniel's name that the king gave him, do not let the dream or its meaning alarm you. Belieshar answered, My lord, if only the dream applied to your enemies and its meaning to your adversaries. The tree you saw, which grew large and strong, with its top touching the sky, visible to the whole earth, with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit, providing food for all, giving shelter to the wild animals, and having nesting places in its branches for the bird. Your Majesty, you are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky, and your dominion extends to the distant part of the earth. But your Majesty saw a holy one, a messenger, coming down from heaven and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump. Bound with iron and bronze in the grass of the field, while its roots remain in the ground, let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with the wild animals until seven times pass by for him. So that was the dream that Daniel saw. And what happened is that Daniel said in verse uh, 27, it says, Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right, and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed, that it may be that then your prosperity will continue. What happened? So he asked them to repent. So we're always given a chance to repent, guys. It comes to us. We need to do that. So in verse 28, this all happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, the king was walking on the roof of a royal place of Babylon, and he said, Is this not the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power for glory and of my majesty? And you notice there that he was giving glory unto himself, that he did this. He forgot what the Lord had said, even through all these other miracles that he saw. So in verse 31, even while the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all the kingdoms on the earth and gives them he gives them to anyone he wishes. And immediately, Nebuchadnezzar became like a beast as well, right? So we have to be changed, right? We need and get the opportunity to repent. As Nebuchadnezzar said in verse 34, Is I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes into the heaven, and mine understanding returned to me, and I bless the Most High, and I praise and honor him that liveth forever, ever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. So the transformation was going to undertake him that would literally make this wealthy, powerful king act like an animal. So as you can see, this is all rich and foreshadowing. So the one we see is the global king 
being compared and transformed formed into a beast. And in Revelation, the Antichrist is constantly to, referred to as the beast, as Satan, as I had mentioned earlier. We also see the length of the punishment of Nebuchadnezzar is seven times, which is interpreted as seven years. This is the length of the final end time period of the earth, known as Daniel's 70th week. The 70th week is the time when the beast or the Antichrist makes his ascent to the global power and rulership. Just as Nebuchadnezzar was changed, so will the beast. The Antichrist will de be defeated by the mere appearance of Jesus Christ on earth. And I read that in Revelations chapter 19. And then he will suffer great eternal punishment in the lake of fire. I have grown to fully trust Don, master of all masters. He may seem rude, clumsy, and silly from time to time, but he has earned my trust in the past two and a half years when I suspiciously followed his every move. He is a genius, a 5D chess player, a man with a huge heart. There will be a relatively short bridge period between the two in which people can adjust to the new paradigm and its energies. I don't think there will be much chaos. Everything is ready to be implemented. A new banking system without interest. New ways to educate our children. A new medical system without poisonous addictive chemicals. and. and so on, and so forth. All we have to do is be patient, watch everything unfold, trust the plan, do... We're going to have this time of false peace when really there is no peace, and then things are going to start happening. So just be careful, okay? Okay, God bless you.